Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Netney Draws. I'm Netney, and today I'm coming at you with the full drawing of the Red Mermaid, which has been kind of a long time in the making. Um, this piece took a, took a lot of time, and because it took so much time, it ended up overlapping, and it was such an incredible amount of footage that it took in order to create this that I felt it needed to be divided up into two videos in order to really get an understanding of it um, and to really see the details that happened. But I know that there are some who prefer to get a quick and dirty version, so that's kind of what I made here. Um, I tried to cut it down as much as I can without losing it completely because my computer can only go up to about 5,000% speed, so I don't know. It's still going to be kind of a long video, but hopefully not overly long to the point where you're not going to enjoy it. Um, if you've seen the previous videos, you know this drawing took a lot of stages. So the initial drawing I did inside my sketchbook was much smaller than this. It was on a 5x7 sketchbook, and it was done very loosely with a blue pencil. And working on a smaller scale, it was something that I worked on when I was at work and when I was at like the coffee, coffee shop and things like that. So it wasn't really something that I was focused too heavily on. It was just something I played with in my spare time. And then I ended up really liking it. Very similar to how the Megalodon piece turned out. And so then what I did is I scanned in the sketch. I blew the sketch up in Photoshop and then I printed it out very lightly on eight and a half by 11 paper. And I took a red pencil and I sketched over the top of the previous sketch in order to get more details to kind of see where I wanted this piece to go. And from there she really transformed. Um, I ended up doing the third rendition of this where I took the second sketch with the red pencil and then used my light box to transfer that version over to the piece of cardstock that I actually end up drawing this on for the final piece. Um, I love cardstock, just as like a little aside here. Cardstock is a little bit softer than Bristol, but it's also very smooth, and I love cardstock when I'm working with colored pencil. So that tends to be what I use when I do colored pencil work. And so yeah, I transferred it over with cardstock onto this piece of paper, and I started working on it. And <clears throat> if you've seen in the past any of my colored pencil work, I I started off doing colored pencil. When I first started doing illustration work, oh god, nine years ago, I, I called myself a colored pencil artist. And as much as I love my Copic markers, which I do, I think of myself still as being much better when it comes to Prismas than I am with Copics. And I think that that's patience and it's perseverance and it's also a past experience with it. So I already know how those Prismas are going to behave with certain things thrown on top of them, how they blend well together. And so that is why I have chosen the Prisma colors. And I've kind of been sticking with the Prismas quite a bit lately because I have a lot of, a lot of ideas and I really just have a very small amount of, Col of Copic markers, but I, I have the whole set of Prismas. And <laughs> so that means that I can really realize whatever it is that I want to realize without having to go out and buy another expensive pen. So while I know Copics are kind of all the rage right now on YouTube and with other illustrators, it, rightly so, because they are incredible pens. Um, I've been sticking to the Prismas quite a bit lately in order to realize what it is that I really want to get down on paper and not be constricted, I guess, by the colors that I can afford because I am not a rich lady and so I can't afford to just go out and buy the whole set of Prism or Copics or anything. So yeah, um, <laughs> these Prismas that I'm using right now, I have had for almost 10 years. I got them from my mom when I was still in high school, and they're still in pretty good shape. They're not perfect, but they're not terrible either. Um, I have had to do a couple of things to them over the over the years to keep them um, 
still usable, I guess, because colored pencils, especially Prismas, they are very soft lead on the inside of them. And if they get thrown around a lot, like if you have a backpack, um, they tend to break on the inside. And so what I have done in order to dodge that problem is I have put them in the microwave to allow the lead to to melt just a little bit and then it'll fuse back together and that makes it much 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 easier in the long run to be able to continue using them. So that is one of the things that I have done to keep them safe over the years. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I Once I finished this piece I realized that there were a lot of similarities of her and my bobtail squid piece that I've done in the past. It's not overwhelming similarities, but enough of them where I was a little like Meh. afterward. Um, I, I guess it's no surprise that I love the color red with yellow. They're two of my favorite combinations. So I guess it shouldn't come as a surprise that I did that again, but at the same time, it's kind of frustrating to be able to see so many similarities between the two pieces, especially since the two pieces are about five years apart from each other. And I felt like I, I, like I should have learned more by then, but I guess, I don't know. Some, some things are hard to kick out of your brain, I guess. Cause I just love that, like the flowy hair and the red and the yellow as like the background color in this one. It's just <clears throat> something I really enjoy. So, yeah, um, I don't, I've had a lot going on, so I know it's been a little while since I have posted and I'm sorry about that, but yeah, I'm back, kind of. I'm just taking it easy and taking it slow. So I was sick and then I had some family problems and so it's just been me taking it nice and easy. Um, yeah, so we're coming up on the, the new, new year and, um, yeah, it's a lot to deal with going into the new year and, and plotting out what you want to succeed at and what you want to move on past and what you want to accept your failures for and what you're not ready to accept failure for yet and i haven't really done enough thinking about that yet i i guess um <clears throat> you guys know i have my new planner and i will probably share some more information about that soon but i really felt like i wasn't very organized this year i wasn't really on top of what i wanted to get done and so i've been spending a lot of time thinking about what it is that i want to accomplish in the upcoming year and what kinds of projects i want to take on and what i need to get finished and all those things so i uh i plan to include her in one of those projects i hope you guys keep an eye out for them um and Help me grow my channel by sharing this with your friends who might be interested in art and thumbing it up. You wouldn't believe how much it helps a person's rankings just literally by commenting something quick and easy and hitting the thumbs up. It, it's absolutely the best thing you can do to help an artist grow their channel and become a little bit more in the artist community. So. For all of you who are subscribers, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate every single one of you. And for those of you who just stopped in to watch my video and you're not a subscriber, you're awesome too. But uh, you should totally subscribe <laughs> so you can see more videos like this. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and check out my website at knitnews.com. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye!